la 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 hello and welcome to the stream uh today's pre-stream chatter was me first saying a la la in no particular pattern and then i sort of did it uh with um the tune of the colonel buggy march uh again not very interesting okay welcome to the stream now in the past few days we've been looking at um asteroids planetary moons and so on uh occulting stars occulting bright ish stars so it turns out that, of course there's an organization that already does this which i sort of knew about i thought it was iota.org but it is occultations.org it's the international occultation timing association and they are people who are very interested in watching um stars get occulted by various different things so they do have some predictions here uh, major planets and their satellites now what's interesting here is um you will see the star the stars that are being occulted are very faint in general in fact not visible to the naked eye which is fine if that's what you're looking for um so i guess what what i'm sort of surprised by is is there a reason they don't list uh, first of all are there occultations i found that occurred this year because their occultation files only go up to the end of this year they do not go to like uh, i found some occultations in 2024 but this this file doesn't go that far uh and i don't think let's see i don't think there's a place uh asteroid okay there's a place they have a they have a software you can download for yourself. Um, um, a lot of free tools, apparently. They're into that. So nothing is not free. They do have a program that compute, computes occultations, um, apparently, which is what I had. Okay. Um, occult tutorial. <coughs> Excuse me. Um is generated uh, for a wide range of uh, so occultations of stars by asteroids planets and planetary satellites occultations of stars by the moon the moon is sort of a big one that that we could look at their moon page but we kind of know the moon the moon occults a lot of stuff uh solar and lunar okay eclipses the transits of the satellites of planets against the planet which is not super interesting it just means that io will get in front of jupiter briefly and transit it essentially uh, mutual occultations of planetary satellites again io gets in front of ganymede or whatever it's not uninteresting um but it is not what we're looking for um so let's see okay first time is okay da -da -da -da. uh let me see if the word linux is mentioned anywhere in here nope that doesn't mean you can't get it with without linux but it's going to be a pain in the ass and since we're already using our own uh, data here, um, that's not something we need to do. So now we're going to try to find an occultation we know about, they don't know about, uh, and ask them why they don't have it in a um, in a very rude way. I think we should be we should be quite rude about this. Our goal is to actually find occultations by the the um, um, let's see. Okay, hang on. Somewhere it tells us what is... The, okay, yeah, here it is. Uh, no, wait, hang on. Um, date, when, diameter, duration, star, magnitude drop, elongation. Wow, it doesn't tell you what's doing the occulting. I mean, in a way, you don't... You could go to uh, any sort of star catalog and find out, but that's still kind of unusual. Let's see. Um... Let's go ahead and <coughs> excuse me. Uh, I do have the coronavirus and I'm dying from it, so you know, whatever. Uh, or allergies are starting to show up, which is probably more likely. So let's create a directory for this. I hope I have uh, done the right thing so we don't get effed with this, okay? And let's go ahead and I think we just downloaded the, um, just downloaded the, I don't think this has any additional information, but we might as well look at it real quick. And by the way, it is one of those zip files that uh, has nothing in it but one f other file. It's essentially a compressed text file. So we can get rid of the original. Okay. So 
So taking a look here, I don't, again, don't think there's anything interesting here. This is just a, uh, oh, hang on. Uh, Iapetus. So I th I'm pretty sure I saw the word Iapetus in the, uh, in, on the web page. I just didn't kind of, like, get it. Uh, so let's take a look here. For, oh, there it is. That's the thing that's doing the occulting. Um, that's a very short title. I'm kind of worried about it a little bit. Uh, Iapetus is the, the name of a moon. Um, is Pluto. These are mostly planets. Mimas. Um, and I'm guessing that they don't have any occultations, even if they could, from moons that are not in sea spice. On the other hand, they might. Uh, if they're using sea spice, they don't, but they might be using something else entirely. They, they might have added these ec extra moons to their software already. Um, so the question, so if this is to be believed, and, and you know, uh, there are no occultations of really bright stars above like 5.5 magnitude. All of the, and there's only a handful of dimmer stars being occulted this year by planets or their satellites. So the first thing we want to do is fuck them over um, by showing that they're wrong and stupid. Uh, so what we do here is we, they, they actually probably are correct. So what we do here is we do have our occultations listed in the wonderfully misnamed directory this. Um, so we could actually look at, for example, Io's occultations, and, and there they are, and it, it, does, it does occult some uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. These are not occultations. These are the separations. The occultations would be when this number is below zero. Um, so we could... Uh, we're going to be a little bit careful here. Um, one, two, three, five, N, and then we should see the actual occultations. And here, if this is to be believed, uh, there are no occultations. This minimum separation in degrees, allowing for the diameter of Io as viewed from the Earth, nowhere on Earth would we actually see an occultation. So I'm beginning to think that maybe um, uh, these bozos are right, unfortunately. Um, but, but there's other issues here. One issue is we weren't able to compute uh, occultations for uh, many of the, uh, some of the moons here, because if we do this, it'll say, we, I don't know the radius of uh, object 719. Um, so, so this is what we're hoping to fix now by adding these radii and maybe then finding occultations that others have not found. But first, uh, I, sent, I feel like Julie uh, Chen when I said Julie Chen uh, Moonves, uh, if when I say that because that's a big big brother thing. But first, so what we can do here, uh, and I'm hesitant. We can we can bzcat all the results together. Let me see what that gives us, and then sort by the fifth field, and this will give us the occultations that we. Um, this will give us basically every minimal separation between planets, moons, and any star. This is going to be freaking huge, um, which is why I'm kind of scared to do it. But um, but mo most of them won't be occultations. Most of them, the separation will be far too big. So we'll call this occult1.txt, and we will actually not do this here because this is a, a, a file system mount. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do this on my other machine because this is this is one of those things where it, you know, size not size speed speed does matter. Okay, hang on one second here while I try to figure out where the hell I am. I rarely know. Um, okay. Okay. Results. Dot text dot bz2. Let me make sure it starts out okay, and then we're going to do a doing a sort in sort of a pipeline makes things a little bit more difficult. Uh, and it's really bad if you do it to the wrong field because then you've wasted the entire sort. Um, so we'll call that occult one, and we will actually go ahead and do this on my other machine. And I will set up a pop up on the other machine as well to let me know when this is done because uh, I can do that. Okay. So while it's doing that, and we try to compare our list to uh, IOTA's list, of course, we'll have to restrict further uh, because we're also, they're only listing occultations in the year 2020. Um, so now going back to our old sort of project-ish thing, we were trying to get the NAFE IDs of all of the, uh, all, everything that's in SPICE. We were trying to get the NAFE ID, well, the NAFE ID is already there, and the uh, name and the radius. And they're all coming from different sources, so we have kind of an ugliness going on there.
So our first attempt at that... Oh crap, I probably had that up in the other Emacs that I got rid of. That's okay. Our first attempt at that was... Um, something. Extract NAFE IDs. Okay, the sword has completed. That was quicker than I thought it would be. Um, so let's take a look here. Oh, I guess we already have the results from be here already, so... Um, let's take a look. We'll, I call the results Occult 1. Okay. And we're seeing, the, by the way, the bulk of cases here, it's going to be Earth's own moon that's doing the occulting. That's not surprising. Um... So, and I think the Earth's moon is the only thing that's big enough to give a uh, degree separation subtracted the angular width that this is that's this big. So again, this is uninteresting, and there's another in uninteresting part of this. Um, let me see how big occult one should be huge. And that is wow, 1.2 gigs. We're only interested in the part of occult one where the fifth field is less than zero. Uh, we might allow for a little bit bigger than zero, just to sort of allow for, um, just to sort of allow for, uh, you know, slight overlap. Let's just take a look here. We'll go 10% into the file. It should be way too much. Yeah. 1% into the file. Already too big. So we need a very, very, let's see, 0.5% into the file. Minor annoyance with less. It really did take me to 0.5% in the file, but it still says 1%. It won't, it'll take you to fractional percentages, but it won't show them. Um, so let's do 0.1%. Oh yeah, and some of this, of course, is coming in... Whoa, 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 whoa. Because error messages are being sorted unusually. And it might be, actually, that the error messages... Um, I probably should have an assort minus U here. Jesus Christ. Definitely should have done. Okay, so it apparently it looks like the uh, the zero alphabetizes before the negative alphabetizes before the blank as a number. Um, so now the question is, uh, I guess the question is, what am I going to set my um, my tolerance to here? Um, I could do it at zero, which is sort of the correct way of doing things. But I want to allow for extremely close conjunctions of, let's say, 0.1 degree uh, of arc uh, is um, six minutes of arc, which is generally roughly the minimum uh, ability that a human has to resolve, uh, the unaided eye has to resolve two objects being separate from each other. Might actually be eight minutes. But so I think what we're going to do here, um, and this is again kind of wasteful because these are sorted. Um, Oh, actually, I could be clever, huh? If dollar sign five is bigger than 0.5, then I can exit the program because I know these are in order. Uh, and then I don't even need an else statement here. I'll put one here because it's really ugly to not put one here um, like this. So this basically will um, print out every line up till the point that the fifth field, I, which is F4 because this is Perl, uh, is greater than 0.5, I think. So let's see. Ooh, shiny. That was really quick. Um, I'm not sure I believe that. Hang on. Okay, maybe it was just really quick because we... Uh, so let's call this a cult 2. It's still not quite perfect, but let's take a look here. Uh, da -da 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 -da. So this is only 34,980 lines, much more manageable. And, okay, so this actually does have the same problem as the other one. Um, we need to get rid of the uh, the uh, extra lines, which is not a problem, so we can do this. Um, go ahead and sort it. Now we're going to have to manually, which I hate doing, but I mean, sometimes you got to. Um, okay. And now we're down to about 28,007. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. Um, wait. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, so something's wrong. Hang on. Stand by. Oh, yeah. Um, actually, I can't do that because the sorting has to be numerical by the fifth field. So this actually has to be K5NU. And that might have... Oh, shit, shit, shit. What, what, what? Oh, K5N. That's... 
Um, can I do a unique like that? I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. Let's see what this does. Okay. So that we have da 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 and this is a small enough file we can actually go through it pretty quickly. Okay. We ignore the first Pomodoro time as always. And yeah, wow. I'm not surprised that most of these occultations are by the moon. The moon is a huge satellite. Com well, it's not that big. Well, it is big, and it's also big because we're very close to it. Um, it's also actually one of the bigger satellites in the solar system, depending on how you define satellite. I personally define Phobos and Deimos uh, to be asteroids. So now we should be seeing some of the stuff that's not 301. There we go. Uh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Wow. Okay, so we are we are seeing some stuff that's not 301 here. And then we have, I think, just one blank line, which I can live with. Is there just one blank line here? Yeah. Because the fifth field of all the text fields is literally space. Um, so then we have these, and we're going up to uh, other stuff. Okay. Um, so we're looking for two things here uh, to... to mess with occultations.org. We need to find... Hello, 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 Rolf! Uh, <laughs> I've done that too, actually. I used to do that too. Sort whatever, pipe to unique, pipe to usually a unique minus C if you want to count stuff, and then sort minus NR again. But yes, there is a, a minus U option to sort. Believe it or not, though, it has problems because it doesn't it it use on the field, not on the whole, um, not on the whole line. And I actually once complained about this, I think, in Stack Exchange because it really is confusing if you're not expecting this behavior. Um, let me see if I can find that. Just because I'm sort of curious, um, I'm sort of curious if we can find that. Um, okay, so someone actually asked the exact same question you did. What's the difference between sort minus u and um, sort pipe to unique? And they are, okay, so it's more compatible, blah, 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 blah. There's actually a problem, though. Um, okay, this is telling us there's a difference in the way it does. Oh, hang on. I think this is an example I almost used. I'm very close to this example. Um, okay, so, so there, there is a, god damn it, I'm going to have to look at my name in here. Um, um, I, I, fuck, the hell, um, Barry Carter, um, I haven't asked that many. Yay. I ask way too many questions, I think. But why? Why? I mean, the word sort's not going to be in all of these. Okay, and I think it was on Stack Overflow, so we can limit a little bit more. Um, this might be it. This is actually a different complaint. This points out that um, uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm actually I'm, I was wrong. This actually points out that sort minus s, which is stabilized sort, uh, is just insane about what it thinks. Um, what it thinks it, uh, should be coming for it thinks that D comes before dot but you can F it up to the point where it thinks that um, it, yeah okay so sorry that was not what I thought it was it was but sort has some real weirdnesses to it um, especially when you start adding options sort minus s doesn't do what you think it does sort minus u doesn't do what it think you think it does because it only looks for duplicates in the given field so which in this case is exactly what I wanted but usually that's not, not necessarily what you want okay so what we found here is a list of all the occultations uh, to screw with. Um, the first thing we need to do is get rid of all the ones by the moon because that's not interesting. I mean, that's not what we're looking for right now. 
Um, so we can do that pretty easily. Unless uh, dollar sign equals 301, print dollar sign. And occult 3 is a fairly small file, so we can do this. And so now we can look at the... Um, there are not really that many um, occultations. Um, because below this line is just stuff that's really close, not occultations. By non-lunar stuff. I'm impressed. Okay, so the other thing we can do now is because to, I'll go ahead and go back to occultations. Oh wait, you know, occultations.org real quick. Their uh, their table only goes through uh, the end of this year. So if we're going to f with them, we have to ignore results that are at bef beyond the end of this year. This is the Unix time here. So the end of this year which is actually the beginning of next year, is this second in Unix time. Um, so we just need to make sure that, in addition to that not being 301, 0, 1, 2, 3. That the third field, which tells us what time this happens, is less than next year. So this is... Uh, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, you need a dollar sign here. That's one of the fun things about switching between languages. Wait. Oh, oh shit. Yeah, I'm doing this test backwards. So, if F1 is three, I want to ignore it, and if F3 is bigger than this, big, it happens beyond next year, ignore it as well. Shit. Motherfucker. So literally, no fucking occultations this year. The closest we're going to get, and I do want to look at this because it sounds like a fun occultation to look at, um, is going to be, this is actually really close. I mean, this is almost touching. Um, but according to my calculations, nowhere on earth will this actually occult. But let's take a look at this. This is actually vaguely interesting. Um, Uh, so even this is a December 1st, so I kind of want to look at this, though. Um, the problem is I don't know if Stellarium is going to uh, show this minor planetary body, this... Um, what? Read me stream. Read me. Okay. We'll do it this way. Am I running two Emacs's again by mistake? I am. So this time I am not going to do that. I am going to get rid of this Emacs. Okay. Okay. So we'll do this one. And here we will just... This is becoming my notepad here. We will just do... This one, which still is not an occultation anywhere on Earth, but someplace on Earth it's going to be... 0 0.003 degrees, which I believe, if I'm doing the math right, is about one second of arc. Um, so, again, we bring up our friend Stellarium. Yep. And uh, for some reason, I'm going to bring it up from this one place and not the other place. Very, very strange. Uh, apparently, this is not the place I need to bring it up from either, so this is okay. B1. Here we go. So this apparently is the one place I can bring it up. I really need to figure that out, because that's not a good thing. Okay. Alright, so the first thing we need to do is shift the date to... Uh, oh boy, I wish I'd kind of recorded what that date was, but we can do this. Date minus D at December 1st, 2020. And we're just going to get close to there. Uh, and we'll just do that. Okay. I'm going to stop the clock here real quick. And then... I think we're going to do this by looking to see what asteroid this is. I, unfortunately, I get the feeling this might be one of the asteroids that doesn't have a name. Oh, it does! Cool! Eros. So it's very erotic. The stream is uh, very erotic here because it has Eros in it. So let's look for that uh, minor body Eros. Okay, cool. Oh ho, hello. That's, that's our friend Chai Virgo. This is pronounced Chai. So this is this is looking like it's a good prediction. 
Uh, let's see how we can... Yep, 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 yep. Ooh. Oh! Mother. So here's going to be... We're going to have another problem now. And that is because Stellarium likes to print stars as though they have uh, a, a, a real angular diameter, they don't, actually. They're essentially pinpoints. It's going to... We're going to make it look like... Uh, are we? Wait, did we miss... The, oh, we do miss the star. Um... Okay, so even even um, even Stellarium tells us we missed the star, but guess what? We can cheat. Uh, this is only from Albuquerque. If we go somewhere else, uh, because oh wow, Eros is, Eros is apparently close enough that changing our latitude changes its position. I won't say significantly, but it is enough to be noticeable. And probably changing the longitude will have the same effect. Oops, other direction. Uh, and again, this is kind of bad of me because I really should be able to compute where. Oh wow! Uh, so this is going to be a, this is going to be a crapshoot if I keep doing this, um, and I won't. But but the idea here is there's some place on Earth, and we could figure it out if we really wanted to, where Eros will be within one arc second of X Virgo, uh, Chi Virgo. I can't believe I just said it correctly and then said it incorrectly. Okay, so it's quite a bummer here. Um, number one, occultations.org is correct, which we hate. Uh, and number two, um, if we really want to see these things better, we need to figure out where on the Earth the maximum occultation occurs, which we can do. We can, we can do the line from X Virgo, uh, Chi Virgo through the, the, the asteroid, and you know where that line touches the Earth uh, will be the area of maximum eclipse. Um, okay, so that was kind, kind of, kind of, kind of annoyed. All right, Rolf. As always, please feel free to make any comments, questions, um, anything you want. Really, is cool. Um, okay, so now that we have uh, been very disappointed that we have not now. Okay, so now we've not found any occultations occurring with the moons that Spice knows about. Our, our cool goal here is to add moons that Spice doesn't know about and see if any of them have occultations. And if they do, and they happen to be this year, and it happens to be of a star that's bright enough, we win and we can tell occultations.org how stupid they are. Um, and we could probably also do some other f stuff like tell NASA that we've done this so they can... I'm, I'm sure they'll create their own file, like I've said, but if they want to, they can use mine or they can at least use mine as a template, whatever. So now we go back to the problem we had earlier, which is we need to figure out... Um, let's see if I can... Okay. Um, so basically, all objects in SPICE have a NAIF ID. The question is, do they have a name, including provisional names, or multiple names some of them will have, it turns out. And second, can we find their radius? through Probably through their name, because of the terrible way everything is organized here. Um, uh, what kind of, okay. Uh, so in the, okay, so good question, good question. So in the occultation program I'm the, I wrote, essentially, uh, which is not that great, it just, it just uh, uh, occultations.c, um, This is not... Uh, let me check something here. I actually had a little shell script that did the most of the work here, and I should have the shell script still here somewhere for T-shell script. Um, oh, this doesn't do what I think it does. Um, hang on one second. Um, I'm almost sure it's the J2000 uh, ICRF coordinate frame, uh, but it, it should say, in, it, it will say in the program for sure. But if it doesn't, then I've done something very, um, the hell? It's always a mystery to me when I do stuff and it just like, I didn't remember, I don't remember doing that. All right, let's find it real quick here. 2020-0312, huh. Um, all right, we'll do it this way. We'll find out what it is from... Um, 
Planet Moon Occult Star. Um, that's the one I use. That's the one that has the... Uh, um, yeah. Da -da -da -da. Okay. So, da -da 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 -da. All right. this is the one that also includes the, the star data. Um, the angular distance... Um, don't know what that is, but here in the main program, um, cool. Let's see. I, it's got to be. See, because I'm using the HYG data, it's got to be in the same system as that, and that has to be J2000. There it is. Compute the position, and that. So I'm using. Okay, so you gotta be a little bit careful. We're using the J2000 system uh, as our base system. But here, we're computing the uh, distance, we're computing the coordinates from, in this case, the Earth. Um, so this is basically saying we look at the position of the planet minus the position of the Earth and in the ICRF system, and that's the vector we look at um, to see where the planet is. And the HYG data I'm using is already in J2000 format, so I can just use it sort of the way the raw, the, you know, I can just use it as is. I don't have to compute it. Hopefully that was helpful. Um, and if I weren't using HYG data, if I were using some other data, I could, in theory, uh, use. I would have to use whatever coordinate system uh, the star catalog is in, because that's that's the one I'm using has to has to match. Okay. You're welcome. Um, and I really need to clean up these programs that have very similar sounding um, names. Okay. So the, the real ugliness here, which I, and I need to clean this up a lot, um, is, is inconsistency, basically. Um, there are three ways to find names. The brief command, the comment command, and a file that NASA has on their site that I've downloaded called nafids.html. Um, two problems is the names don't necessarily occur in all of these files, so you have to look through all three of them. Second of all, the names aren't consistent across the files. It is possible, usually it's a, it's a typo or a, a truncation, but it is some, some of them do have more than one name. So hideous ugliness is what we have here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first create a subroutine. Um, I already created one for extracting lunar rate, and what that does is that just basically uh, goes through the uh, HTML tables that um, that NASA has on their. Uh, actually, I don't think this does the right thing anymore. Um, and the idea is it tells you what the radius of a given moon is, but I think. I think there's a problem with this actually now. Okay, so this is where we get the name and radius, and then we we do a little bit of cleanup work here. And I do not think I want to be printing anymore. To um, yeah, let's not do that. Um, that part parts. Oh, actually, I shouldn't even need this path. I'll leave it, but I shouldn't really need it anymore. So yeah, we're not going to order... Yeah, we're not going to do this. We're not going to try to use Unix commands anymore. We're going to try to... Um, and we're not going to use prints anymore either. Um, I mean, I still need this, but I'm not going to print to it. And we also want a subroutine. I, so you might ask why I need so many corrections to this, and the answer to that is... Because early, when I first did it, I was trying to be quick and clever. I wanted to get something in very quickly. Um, so I kind of didn't do what I should have done, which is subroutinize this stuff, look at it more carefully, blah, blah, blah. Now I, I do have to do that. So let's go ahead and fix the extract lunar radii function first, um, which is bigger than I thought it would be. OK. And I guess I'm going to go ahead and start commenting my data. Um, Look at HTML files like, and I guess I'm going to be nice and actually comment it the way it's supposed to be commented. 
Stellarium be gone. And let's see. Uh, I'm not going to list all of the files that I'm using, but I, I think I'm going to list a... Um, uh, okay. I don't know why I can't... I have this bookmarked and I can't find it. All right, Pomodoro time. Back in two and two. And we are almost back. And I just typed some letters that went nowhere. Okay. Okay. And we're back. Okay. Um, so I'm going to say look at HTML files like I'm not going to list all of them, but I'm going to say just they're like there's you know there, there's files like this one. Uh, read data for each uh, planet's moons. Look at the first table, which has the radiuses. So what we want. Uh, if there is no table, we just skip over that. Um, and so we get. So this whole thing is one big table. It's all of this information about the uh, the satellites is one big table. Okay, so I did actually apparently uh, comment this a little bit. Um, And my original was this, and I think that didn't actually work, so... Uh, and we don't need this anymore, either. Um, in theory, I should comment this, but this basically says, if the row is not in the format we want, ignore it. Uh, extract name and radius. Uh, <laughs> Get rid of cleanup, and this could just be set cleanup name. And this basically, the problem is that in in a in an extreme amount of inconsistency, names like this are given like this here, but inside of other files, the same name is given in a different way. However, I'm going to do something that maybe is a little bit better than that. So let's just quickly go up here and say, um. And I, this would probably be inside the main loop. Okay, so hashes. I'm going to define a bunch of hashes. And they will be uh, ID to name. And if that, if that's, so it's going to be, this allows it to hold multiple names. So this will convert the ID to the name. And, and I guess, okay, now fuck. Gotta be a little bit careful here. Uh, I think putting a my here will still give it access to ID to name here in this inside this sub function. I think Perl scoping rules allow that. So my ID to name, and it would be nice if I declared it before I used it. That would be kind of nice. Um, and name to ID. So we can go the other way. And. That's all we're going to need for right now. So here, even before we do the translation, I'm going to say that ID to name of, um, oh, fuck. If 
fuck, 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 fuck. We don't have the ID here. Um, so, we didn't need those, but anyway. Um, name to radius. We are not going to need it the other way. We're not going to need to convert radiuses back to names, because that's, that's silly, I think. So we're going to say name to rad of um, name... And I'm going to be a little bit weird here and actually make this uh, this. The reason here is if we have conflicting radii for the same name, we need to know about that. So this basically says that, you know, if you look at the keys of name to rad name, they will be all the radiuses, hopefully just one, of the planet or the moon in question. Okay? Uh, and then over here... Oh, shit. Hang on. Um, I'm going to make the uppercase come first because I want all the names to be uppercased. So even this, even this one here. So this is the name, store it, and then we fix this and then we, um, you know, print rather. So then we all, oh, and, uh, yeah, so we have name to rad here and name to rad here. And so we're basically, basically giving this, um, we're giving this two possible names here. We're giving it both the name that looks like S2000J11, which is how it appears in this file, and how it's going to appear in other files, which is S2000 underscore J11. Uh, that shouldn't hurt anything because we are allowing many-to-many -many relations. It's, a, it's possible for one NAFE ID to have multiple names. Hopefully, we won't have any cases where one object has multiple NAFE IDs, but we will allow for that so we can check for it. Okay, so that's the end of the uh, the rows. That's the end of the uh, uh, the other in inner loop. And that's the end of the function. Okay, and now I actually need to write a function that I should have written before. Um, if we already have radius data for something uh, in Spice's official files, we do not want to overwrite it with data from from these HTML files. Presumably, the data from Spice is the more accurate data. Okay, so I'll go ahead and do this, and that should actually come even before uh, da, 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 external lunar radii. Um, okay, right. So this will be um, ex uh, existing spice radii. Again, terrible name, but we're not really doing it for anything. And that is has radii. And this one I need to explain as radi x means that we have really it means spice official radi for object for NAFE ID. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and write existing spice radi. Again, I'm not going to comment this, but this is not really a you know, a function you could use anywhere else. It's just a function to make my life easier so I can, you know, debug by testing portions of the program. Okay, and we're going to go straight into it with, um, oh, there's more than one way to do this, as pretty much everything. We're looking for the, uh, the PCK file, which is going to be um, this thing. It's P this is the latest version, and I, it, it bugs me that it's the latest version because it's really old. But, Got to do what you got to do. Um, blah, 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 uh, This has a lot of comments in it, but the thing we're looking for, we'll, we'll go ahead and look for it. Um, we're looking for stuff like this. Uh, some body number underscore radi, and this is the sun, it turns out, and uh, we don't really care about the numbers, but in, in case you were wondering, the Sun is a nearly perfect sphere that has a radius of 696,000 kilometers, according to SPICE. The International Astronomical Union disagrees slightly, but that's not important right now. The Moon is also nearly a perfect sphere. Uh, Venus, I didn't know Venus was a perfect sphere. That's cool. Uh, and this, and by the way, this is where you start to notice... Oh, shit. Okay, we might have issues already. So... Uh, all right. The problem is some of these, uh, where it says begin text, it's actually just uh, comments. 
And so we need to be, okay, yeah, as it says, each of these tokens must be placed, okay. Okay, the portion of the file preceding the first data block is treated as a comment block, it doesn't, okay. So they do mention this, but, so begin text, we're not interested, in, oh, hang on, shit. Current values, which are tabbed out. So somewhere here we have a begin data. Okay, it's bad that we don't. Oh, I know what's wrong, actually. Uh, if you're going to search for a backslash, you have to double backslash it. Okay. And we're looking for it at the beginning of a line where we can actually use something. La 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 la. So something is wrong here. Um, let me do this real quick. Either this file doesn't isn't documented correctly, or so we want. Oh shit! It's backslash. So it's this basically. We want a beginning of line, begin data. Cool. It doesn't exist. Cool. We've managed to kind of f this. Um, sort minus u. Oh, actually I think it's allowed to have spaces before it. That might be the issue. So it doesn't have to quite be this. It has to be this, any number of spaces. Yep. Okay. Maybe there are tabs in it. I'm going to lo look at this now. And let's bring it up in uh, Emacs. See what this is. Must be placed on the line. Oh, by on the line by itself. That's different from saying, okay. You've got to motherfucking be kidding me. Current values, then it gives them. Oh man, but Oh, okay. So the old values don't have a begin data in front of them. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> okay. So we can look for stuff between begin data, which may have spaces in front of it, but is online by itself, and begin text, and just look at the data portions of this. Um... I think they're also being nice enough here when they're giving old data. Um, they're actually uh, not capitalizing the word body. So we might be able to use that as well. Um, I semi agree with your statement. NASA probably doesn't care that I'm scraping their data. Um, it's a government organization, they try to put out as much crap as possible. I'm explicitly going to tell them that I did this and offer to let them use my file that I create that will help them. But you're right, in general, a lot of places don't want you uh, scraping their data. The reason, one reason that NASA uses such bizarre formats is this is a very, this goes back before the days of Fortran. Um, so this was when we had very small, very simple programs. Uh, they haven't really updated it for XML or whatever, so yeah, is what it is, though. Okay, so if I'm going to do this correctly, um, okay. And I don't like doing things correctly, but I think I might have to here. Okay, um, so we're going to read this in as a as a one big chunk. And in this case, I probably should do a path or something here, but whatever. Um, we'll split the data on the new line. Data. And as always, I like to, I'm paranoid and I want to check to see this is working. So we'll do this, this, this. We will. We will only test. Oh yeah, we'll only test this because we're. Um, I'm not interested in the rest of this for right now. And let's see what this does. 
Why don't I have it already in my history? Apparently because I don't. And again, I'm spending more time looking for it than it would be to simply... Fuck. BC Extract. Um, I like extracting stuff. Extract, naif IDs, debug, pipe to less. Okay, so I'm getting all the lines. So, um, uh, gotta be careful here. Oh, we need to keep track of whether we're in data or not in data. And we start off being not in data. Um, so if dollar sign i equals beginning of line, nothing but spaces, thanks for putting a backslash in this NASA, backslash begin data, nothing but spaces, end of line, um, then we're going to say in data equals one, but we're going to skip this line because the, the actual... Um, the, end, the begin data line itself is not very useful. Okay. Um, and then if it begins... If it's begin text, then we set in data to zero. Next. And then, so now we can test to see uh, if we're in data, this would only give us lines of data. Uh, it turns out this is going to be un unnecessarily stupid, but anyway. Yeah. Yeah. This is good. This is good. Uh, but it turns out most of this data is not useful to us. I mean, for what we're doing. Uh, we only are going to be looking for data that has... Okay. Um... Oh. Yeah, actually I can also do this. And the reason to do this is to avoid nested loops. This just says if we're not in data, just skip. Because uh, the main our main interest is if we are at data. So this should give us the same results, but ooh. Um, this should give us the same results, but without having to uh, put it inside another for loop. Okay, great. So now... <laughs> Um, this is getting a little silly now. What we want is body D plus underscore radii, and I, I think because we're in data, I will allow either case. Um, so basically, if we don't get that, we'll continue. So now, um, now we're just going to get the radiuses, and this is a huge waste of time to get just that. Okay, fuck, that didn't work. Oh, this is, sorry, dollar sign I. Uh, okay. Ta-da! That was a tremendous waste of time. Yeah, I, there aren't even that many of them. And the only reason we need this is because we need to know that these bodies already have official radiuses that we cannot override, because presumably the stuff in this file is more, is better, is more accurate than anywhere else. Okay. So literally, um, literally has radi dollar sign one. That's all that does. Fun, fun. Okay, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna go ahead and BC get this because it's for fun. Okay, all nicely pushed to get. Okay, so now we need to change this thing here, which is a, a let's see. Well, we actually need to break this into two different subroutines. Um, so this will be extract brief IDs, which sounds a little weird, but I think it's what we need. Um, and this is, again, this is not a real function. We're just using it for convenience. So what this does is this gets the data from the uh, BRF files. Um, but this thing that I did here tries to do it for both BRF and uh, comment files at the same time. Uh, so we need to fix that. 
So look at all binary kernels, which is what this does. And then file name without path and extension, which is exactly what we want. Uh, and Pomodoro time back in two and two. And we are almost back. And we are back. Okay, uh, I'm probably going to stop in about half an hour. Um, I've gone for about an hour so far. May go longer if I get excited by this, not by something else. Okay, um, so we get the file name without the path and the... Oh, okay, hang on. Oh, we are in a for loop. And I'm not going to debug it because I know what it is. So this is a little bit different here. If the if the BRF file doesn't exist, create it. So, and this is actually the wrong one that I'm copying, but I can fix that. So unless there's something called a BRF file in Spice Meta uh, for this for this uh, for this kernel, um, this needs a mine in front of it. Okay, and honestly, I'm not even going to check to see whether it happened correctly. I'm just going to assume it worked. And even if you create this file, we're not we continue because we, we're going to use the file. We're going to pretend the file always exists, but if it doesn't, we create it. So now we read, um, let me go to this portion here. This, there's, this is very similar. Um, so let me, I'm going to cut and paste this here, uh, but I'm not going to, um, I'm going to change it. Okay. So read brief file. So we, now we know that it exists because if it didn't, we created it. Find section of interest. Now, for some bizarre reason, usually this has bodies, but in some of the files that have very short names, uh, it could be truncated. So it turns out this does work. Um, um, okay. Um, Okay, I so find section of interest. So it's basically from where it says body start of interval to the end. Now what bugs me here is we should be able to say if the, if it doesn't if that doesn't happen, uh, we should be able to exit. So there's a reason we're not exiting here that I'm not seeing, and it might just be well not exiting but nexting. And I think the reason might be because I was worried that if you uh, that we the next would take us too deep into the next for loop. So that's that's not true anymore, though. Um, 
unless this is true, this looks, I don't think there's a way to actually make this look any better either. I, it's really no good way to split some cross lines. Um, so if there isn't one, we just continue. If there is one, uh, we assign, we, we get it into the file brief. Um, so now we go through the lines of brief and, uh, um, yeah, I could have also used the same trick here, but I'm, I'm fine with this. So if it looks like a line that we understand how to parse, um, Yeah, this doesn't actually need to be all right. This is probably totally unnecessary. If the line is blank, meaning that it has only uh, hyphens and spaces in it, because that's how they designate blank lines there. Uh, we can just skip it silently. Um, and I guess to comment it, we can t comment it on top of this if loop. So if it's a blank line, ignore it silently. Um, unless it matches this template we're looking for, um, so I kind of want to do a warn here. Bad BRF line, dollar sign J, because I think all of them should match this pattern, because we're inside the right area. Except for blank lines, we should always see something that's useful. If, if not, we might have done something wrong. So there we can do next. So now, the only other case is that it would, does match this. Um, and so what we have is dollar sign, this is the NAFE ID here, and this is the name of the file here. And I just realized there's one reason this isn't gonna match, and that could be when, if there is no, uh, if the line has a NAFE ID but no name. But I want to kind of, I kind of want to look for that case anyway. All right, so we know this, and so now we can say very nicely, name to, let me say what the hell I called it, name to ID, I think. Name to ID of dollar sign two, dollar sign one, uh, and here we're going to be a little bit weird and actually assign it a value called brief. If there is a conflict, I want to be able to see where the conflict occurs. Um, and then ID to name, we we'll go dollar sign one, dollar sign two. And this is a really bad usage of dollar sign one and dollar sign two. You're supposed to assign them to variables first, um, but we're not. Okay, so this says the name to ID is this. The ID to name is... Um, is the other way around. So this should convert named ID, ID to name, and the rest of this should just be crap. Well, hang on, I think we need to end our for loop. Yep. So we need to end our function. Oh no, we need to end our other for loop. Then we need to end our function. Okay. So let's do that over here. So that extracts the IDs from the brief listing of the file. Unfortunately, you would think these would agree with each other, but NASA sucks in this way. There's another way to do it that's very similar, but not identical. And it's so similar, I'm going to... God damn, this is a huge looking, ugly looking function. I'm gonna copy this function and just change it where it needs to be changed. Um, let's make sure I've got two copies that I do, okay. So sub comment IDs, extract comment IDs, uh, we once again look at the binary kernels, kind of wasteful. Um, if the comment file doesn't exist, uh, we create it. Wait. I sense I did something wrong with the other one here. If the brief file doesn't exist, create it, but I don't use comment. I use... Fuck. Alright, let me quickly check to see what I use. Oh, brief minus T. I, I'm good, it's good that I have it all documented up there. So let me now make sure that I don't have any other comment crap in here. Uh, no. I think that's okay. Let's 
And I just realized I need to do something a little bit trickier here. It's theoretically possible, and in fact we hope, that most of them will have the name and ID in both brief and comment. So I'm going to dot equal this so we can get, um, um, so we can see if it's in both. If it's in one or both or whatever. Um, okay, so sorry, now we create the comment file if it doesn't exist. We read the comment file. I feel like I'm just filling in the blanks here. Um, now the section of interest for a comment file is different, so that we really do need to look at this. Uh, yeah, so the comment interest is going to have a file like this. Uh, so if it has this section that says co between this list of names and additional contents on file, which kind of bugs me because I don't know if it's always going to have that. Um, and if it doesn't have this, again, we're going to flip some of the tests here. Unless it has this section of interest, we don't care, and we're going to just say next. Um, but if it does, we assign that to comment. Um, and uh, we could up here print that we have a bad comment file, but it turns out some of these comment files really don't have a list of, of, uh, of things in them a list of body IDs. So it's not really a mistake, it's just, I mean, it's not something that's fatal. Okay. Loop through lines of comment. Okay. Okay. And again, this is going to be different for comment files. Um, um, Does this line have a NAFE ID? And if it doesn't, we're going to just skip over it. So again, we're going to change this loop from if to unless. So unless it matches this criteria, uh, oh, okay, sorry. Um, okay. One thing we can ignore is completely blank lines. And we want to ignore those silently. Um, here, I think, I think I'm going to put a warn in here, but it might be excessive. Um, So if it doesn't have a worn bad CMT line, dollar sign J, but obviously we're going to skip it. All right, so here we're at the point where it definitely does have a um, uh, has a NAFE ID and a name. So here we have my name ID equals dollar sign one dollar sign two. At least I hope that's what we have. Um, all right. Crap, I'm looking in the wrong place again. Um, that is some really fucking tight coding. And the one with the D, let's see. Uh, yeah, that is correct. Name comes first, then ID. Uh, okay. And so all we really need to do now is... Oh, except this time we're going to do it correctly and actually say name and ID. Name to ID, and this time it is dot equals comment. Because that's how we got it. I guess I could put just like B and C to make my look really clever. And then ID to name dot equals brief. And now we need to get it all of our loops, which is the un... Okay. For loop, four of all the files, extract comment ID. So now what we can do is we can get rid of this hideous thing that's in the main body. Um, nope, there's one more. And that is from the nafids.html file, but that's actually okay. That one we can get. So I'm going to wipe this all out. We do have it in git, so it's not fatal. Okay. 
And now, let me see if, ha if I haven't broken them, I'm going to save it to get real quick. Even if it doesn't work. Um... I'm probably okay with that. Okay, let me go ahead and save it to get real quick. And it is now nice and saved. Okay, so the last one is we have to actually use the file nafids.html. Uh, it d doesn't have to be the last one, by the way. It could be anyone that it wants to be. Uh, the order here shouldn't matter, provided we do... Um, this should, for consistency, extract HTML IDs. And here, I'm going to go crazy and just put it right here. Um, so we read the file, and we're looking for the section in the file that has pre-pre, because they, the NAFE IDs file does not format the portion of the file that has... Um, uh, that has, uh, losing my mind, man, does not format the portion of the file that has NAFE ID listings. Okay. So, and this, there could be more than one of these, so we're going through all of them. We're going through them one line at a time, ignore blank line silently. So this time I'm doing it actually correctly. Um... Oh, this is a really short function. Okay. Lines that have a NAFE ID, if they do, we want to say name to ID. I think remembering my variable names is probably the worst thing that I, the thing that I'm worst at. Yeah, name to ID, the one that has, um, doesn't have digits in it, is going to be the um, name. And here we're going to say dot equals. Um, I'll say HTML, and then the same thing in backwards for ID to name. Okay, and again, I think I don't even need this ignoring here. In fact, I think we can flip this loop as well, uh, unless this next. So the only condition left is that we do have a NAFE ID and we can't identify it. So that's the four. That's the, oh, okay, multiple sections, lines per section, and then, um, then the whole function. So, I'll be amazed if this still runs. Okay, wait. There's no place now that you say ignoring, okay, what the hell's going on here? Oh. Right. Actually, yeah, we're going to ignore two. We don't want to do that warning because there's too many bad rows in here that we don't want to actually ignore. Bad CMT line. Oh. Because the system line will always be kind of weird. Um... You gotta be careful how you do this, unless she has that, or dollar sign J equal the system lines basically give you sort of a summary. Well, not a summary, they give you a sum, which is different. Uh, equal tilde, any number of spaces, the word system. Uh, no, actually, I don't want to. I don't want to make this part of this test. It's too complicated. Um. Nested unless. Beginning of line, any number of stars, the word system, any number of spaces, that should be fine. So this should get rid of the, uh, the uh, bad comment lines that come from lines like system. So God willing, whoa, nice. I'm going to save this. Right now we're not doing anything with it at all. We've just created a bunch of ha hashes. Okay, and now the, the the reason we did all of this, of course, is to um, to convert basically ID to name to radius. This is what we're going for: ID to name to radius. All the other ones are just sort of helpers to that. Uh, 
And I guess the one thing we're still missing here is a list of all spice objects that Spice knows about. Pomodoro time back in two and two. We're almost back, and we're back-ish. We're back. Okay, so the only other question we have is we need a list of all the spice IDs in case some of them uh, don't show up anywhere else. Now, the brief command, actually the readme stream tells me this, uh, what I know about the brief command. Um, so the brief command here uh, presumably actually looks inside the kernel and find out, finds out what bodies are listed. There is, however, I think a problem in the way I coded this. Uh, so in theory, extract brief IDs should, should get us everything. There's a problem here, I think. Um, oh, okay, actually there's not. Um, it's theoretically possible for a um, wow, for a, a brief line to have an ID but not have a name. Um, and the weird thing is, I think we can actually this catches those as well, because um, I mean this. It, this doesn't seem to actually require that there be anything else in this line. Um, I think. So when we ran this, we didn't have any lines that either didn't match this or the blank lines. So in theory, we've caught everything, including the ones that have no names. However, I don't believe that, so we. this is where we actually need to start doing some work now. Um, all right, so we're going to sort numerically the keys of ID to name. So this should give us all the IDs. Um, and, okay, dollar sign I, dollar sign the name. Okay, so in the highly unlikely <laughs> event this works, this should map names to IDs, uh, rather IDs to names. Did not expect that to work. Oh. That's just a typo. Okay. Not what I expected. That's kind of... Oh, shit, shit, shit. I know what's wrong. Because of the way we did this... Um... Uh, we actually decided that the uh, to mark the two-dimensional list by as the keys of of this um, of ID to name dollar sign I. Uh, so this is how we're going to get to that. Um, hang on. Yeah, that's fine. Um, 
so we're gonna have here is so this will be the uh, the ID this will be the name and the value here will be like brief comment this will tell us where we got the name from so I think this is gonna do what we want okay I probably won't but anyway ooh oh wow it does so this the satellite names I'm not necessarily crazy about I don't I don't know if we actually want to I mean in theory it'd be really cool to see a satellite uh, a cult of star but I don't know if we can actually really do that um, now you'll notice here interestingly and all from the HTML the solar system berry center can be either like this SSB solar system berry center um, Now you might wonder why this says brief, 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 brief issue, because Mercury's Berry Center appears in multiple BSP files. Uh, so th the brief gives it multiple times. This is cool. This is all good so far. EMB, by the way, is the Earth Moon Berry Center, and um, with or without a hyphen, I guess. Um, uh, and the Earth, by the way, appears in like a bajillion different places. Um, so this is all good so far except for the fact that we're getting lower casedness here, which I wanted to avoid. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and fix this for the, apparently for the uh, brief, um, we forgot to do a, uh, an uppercase, not, not a big deal. Name to ID. This really, really pushes the line of um, using temporary variables like dollar sign one and dollar sign two. <sighs> All right. Uh, whoa. Still not working. Okay, wait, 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 wait. This is from the brief files. We shouldn't be assigning anything else here. Um, hmm. It's a little bit strange. Well, let's go ahead and fix it in other places too. Um, HTML IDs we have. Yeah. So the name should always be capitalized, even. This shouldn't fix the problem, but it might, leading us to that sort of weird, why was it broken in the first place? Lunar radii, um, oh shit, we actually do need this to be consistent too. Yeah, this is fine. Here we actually do do the uppercase. Uh, existing spice radii, uh, I think this is all going to be uppercase anyway, but, you know, to be consistent, we'll uppercase it. Oh no, actually these are, these are numbers, never mind. These are numbers, we don't need to uppercase them. Brief IDs, we did we just fixed this one. Comment IDs, um da, 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 da. So do I have anywhere in here have no I don't. Okay, so there we go. Oh shit. I forgot to change this. That's probably what happened there. Okay. Now, God willing, we will have um, everything is nice and capitalized. Um, the weirdness with this 391-1900 thing is uh, these things don't have names. Yeah. So you can see where we don't have names. It just says 5 by 5 nothing, brief. And... Oh, right, but we do have one from the from the brief file, it says no name. From the comment file, it says we have this funky looking name here. Um, so does this list all the objects? I think it does, actually. Uh, yeah. So, now one thing we kind of don't need, what the hell are these might be comments. One thing we kind of don't need is if we have an, a name for... Um, 
if we have a, like a good name for something like Psyche, and we have a null name for it, we don't necessarily need the null name. We do definitely need the null name in cases like this, where we have a no name whatsoever. Uh, so it'd be nice to get rid of that. These we all need, because these don't have any names. Um, so that's something to worry about a little bit here, is, um, is how we get those... Um, how we deal with the ones that already have two, one, two names, one of which is Mike. Um, and let's and there's a way to do that. Um, and we don't really need to be printing, of course, the actual value here. Let me go ahead and PC get this because I'm paranoid. Okay, off it goes. Uh, but let's go ahead and actually not print. Let's not debug. Let's not bother with how we got there. Let's just do this. And so this is going to give us. Um, and now I'm beginning to begin your comment more that they don't want it. They do. They don't mind people extracting this, but they do make it difficult. Okay. So okay. 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 Interesting. Okay, so now we can go from this to um, trying to find the um, the radius, which was the whole goal in the beginning. Um, and so now we have has radii is not has radii is important because if we actually have the radii um, for I we we don't need to we don't need to let's just see if we can do that so I need a name if dollar sign has radii I we already have it in spice. Uh, we don't need it. So this should now give us the stuff that doesn't have a radii and spice, a much smaller list. Okay, and also I'm going to get, I'm getting sick of these satellites. I might get rid of them. Um, oh, <laughs> these don't have radii and spice because these are, fi these are arbitrary points. The berry centers are just points. They don't have, um, they, they really don't have radii. So, so this is interesting. So we don't the moons one through sixteen don't show up here because they do have radii in um, in spice. We don't want to mess with that. Um, okay, is this getting me annoyed enough that I want to stop doing it? Oh, let's see. That I want to get rid of the ones where we have both a name and not a name. All right, let me see if I can do that here. So basically, we're going to be looking over here. Um, okay. um, the sneef ID. Um, so we'll say this is actually not too bad is going to be the this thing here keys of id to name this looks much worse than it actually is okay and that is going to be that's going to be a list actually cuz it's going to be a list of keys so screw this, screw this, screw this, screw this for right now. Um, uh, <laughs> and then the names. So this, uh, this should give us the same information in a slightly different format. Uh, names of minus 502, names of minus... Let's get something good, man. Okay. So what's vaguely weird here is the names does not 
we don't get the empty string as a name, which probably should annoy me. Because that's what I'm trying to get rid of are, are these. Oh, actually, hang on. There we are. Uh, yeah, so if we do have a blank name and a name, they both show up right now. Um, so. Man. I mean, what we need to do is basically go say, if the names array is bigger than, you know, has more than one element in it, we need to get rid of the blank element in it, but I can't necessarily assume that the first element is the blank element. Um, or can I? Ooh. If I sort the keys, I can make that assumption. Uh, because the blank, I think, comes before anything else. Um, yes, I can make that assumption. Very, very nice. Okay. So here's, <laughs> here's the ugly. Um, if dollar sign number of names is bigger than... Dollar sign number of names is one is is the length of the list minus one. So I think what I'm looking for here is one is okay. Um, why are we printing it after? Uh, oh right, wait, what? Oh, maybe that is actually Helios too. So if you have zero, that's actually fine, because that means you have one. Um, okay, hang on. So you need to have at least two. So greater than or equal to one. So I'm looking for cases like, come on. I'm going to just shoot myself, I think. So we're looking for cases where we have two names, one of which is blank. And these are ones that have no names at all, not what I'm looking for. It's going to be like up with the um, here. If so, if the number of names is bigger than or equal to one, um, or, or equal to one, which means there's at least two elements, and the first element is the empty string. Um, I think I can get away with this. I think this will do... I actually forget whether this removes an element for the, uh, from the array or just returns an array with the last element removed. But... New list names. Okay. And you, S2004 will be our guinea pig. Um, oh, cool. So the names for 814, which had two elements, was blank in this, but after I did this, it became the, we got rid of the empty element. Um, yeah, cool. That worked. Okay, so now obviously if we're going to do this um, for loop here, um, we're going to use the modified list, which is of course um, just names. Okay, so this should be much, much nicer, kind of, maybe. Um, probably not. Oh wait, no, no, I don't want those debugging still in there. Debuggings be gone. Okay, good stuff. This looks pretty good. Now, the only other thing we might want to do here is if we have more than one name, um, that's actually kind of strange. I thought 553 had another name. Oh, no, it doesn't. That's the problem. 
if it did, that, things would be nice. But the fact that they've given it one name somewhere... Alright, Pomodoro time, back in two and two. We are almost back. We're back, but I'm having an issue here. Why does it welcome me to the chat room? I'm already there. So I'm going to quickly check to see on my other machine if my stream is going OK. Um, so let me quickly check to make sure everything's cool. Um, I should probably turn off the sound before I do this. OK. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, Rolf, for saving me th from that trouble. Okay, just out of curiosity, do you know why um, it said welcome to the chat room? I mean, I'm already here. Or was this like a someone mysterious has entered and we can find out who they are by doing this? You're literally the only person here. Okay, so if you happen to know why it's welcome to the chat room, let me know. But I guess we're going to ignore uh, that for now. Okay. Okay. So what this tells us is okay. Yeah. So we think we just did this uh, list of the names for various things. Um. Juliet. Okay. So now the question is: Do we care if something has more than one name? Um. I think we might. So, if dollar sign, ah, uh, hang on, what is it? Da, 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 da. Debug multiple names ahead. Okay, so now there's a lot of check checking we're going to do here, which unfortunately, yeah, multiple names ahead, okay. And the, the Barry Centers will have these two. We need to start really ignoring a lot of this stuff. Um, okay, so now from here, we shouldn't really have one unless there's a mistake. Um, how the, 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 oh, okay. Yeah, so this is where we have the real problems, things like this. Uh, and those are things I need to actually... And I know I'm doing a terrible job of noting stuff down. Um, at some point, I hope... Oh, sorry. Uh, shit. The audio is a bit ahead of the video. Let me see if I can do something here. I'm going to go to my dashboard, which usually tells me 
everything is fine. Um, well, it says excellent, which means absolutely nothing. Um, do you know if there's anything I can do to fix that? Let me check my OBS, but I mean... Um, yeah, the OBS is not... Um, I don't... It seems fine. I don't know how to fix it. Uh, there probably is an audio-video sync setting somewhere. Um, okay. No, I didn't. I, I was just... I appreciate your uh, t helping. Um, I was just hoping... I guess we'll have to go with it. Um, oh, I'm no streaming expert. Yeah, Don't worry about minor typos like that. Okay. Um, so, this is the kind of thing where we don't want multiple names. It is a mistake. <whistles> wow, wow. And this is where we can actually complain to NASA and... and well, one of the many, many ways we can complain to NASA. And this one's particularly bad. I noticed this one earlier. Neptune is spelled Neptun in one of the places. And I think it's a truncation error, not a spelling error, but still. Not cool. Um, that might be okay, actually. Um... Yeah, we're not really looking at comets yet, so at some point this might become an issue, but okay. So we do want to be able to keep track of multiple names, uh, but we don't care about them right now. Da -da -da -da. I'm going to B-seek it as part of my paranoia. Okay, so now I think we can get to what we actually wanted. Um, and part of this is, of course, um, it's in, if it's in, if it's in, spy. By the way, Rolf, I wanted to thank you for sticking around in the stream. I figured any sane person would have left a long time ago, but I guess you want to... You're really going to try to tolerate the whole thing, so I really appreciate that. Um, so if this already has a radius in NAFE, we don't, we don't, in SPICE, not in NAFE, um, we don't want to mess with it. Uh, but if it doesn't, we're going to look at its names, we're going to get rid of this name, and then, the whole purpose of this thing is, uh, to get the radius out of it. So the rad is going to be, uh, for cases where we only have the name, so this should be na named a rad or something. Um... Named rad. Dollar sign named a rad of J. Um, if this works, we we are we're happy. I mean, we're, we're going to clean this up a little bit, but this is this is like ninety percent of what we're doing. Okay, let's take a look here. I really, really need to get rid of these uh, satellites, or at least temporarily. Oh, no, sorry. Once again, wait. Oh, right, because we want to check for the possibility that there are multiple radiuses. Um, because that would be a problem. So what we want is the keys of nam to rad, name to rad, dollar sign J, uh, in order to get those, of course, we have to treat this as a uh, a hash. Um, and I guess we can just do this as a join comma space, well, join comma of rads, which we never hope to see a comma in there. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so this is pretty... <coughs> Excuse me.
excuse me. So this is pretty much me choking to death what we're looking for. And oh shit. Um wait. Didn't save that, which would have helped. Okay. Okay. So this is really nice. So this tells us the radius of uh, 517 is 4. Um, and this, the, ra the reason this doesn't work is because Dia used to have another name. Um, it used to be S2010 something. Okay, but this is not too bad. This is the kind of thing that we could very easily build. We will, in fact, be building something out of right now. Um, oh, wow, we managed to get a, a radius for a, a... Whatever the hell this is, um, even though it has an incorrect name somewhere. So this is, this is looking pretty good. Um... Okay, why don't we have radii, radii for Nix Hydra? Ooh. So, so we need to actually some sort of thing to say where we don't have a radii. Um, and the other problem is we only need a radii for one of the names. If it's got multiple names, only one of them has to have a radius. Um, oh, cool. We even have it for some of the, uh, the weird-looking moons. Um... Okay. Now we do need to do a little bit more with the radius um, here. Do we have any that have an X in them? No. Okay. Let me be annoyed really quickly with the fact that Pluto, even though we should have all of its uh, all of its quote unquote satellites, it's, a, it's not really a planet, so it can't have satellites. But you know, whatever. Um, that we should have. We should have the Pluto moons here, uh, unless. I forgot to download them. Uh, there should be a Metaspice directory in here. Um, if there isn't, we've done something very okay. Am I losing my mind? All right. Okay, not good. Oh, Spice Meta. Of course I said it backwards. Uh, now Pluto Moons is there. Let's take a look at it, see why it's not behaving. Um, oh, because Pluto has a different format for its moons. Um, yeah. So Pluto, we're going to be missing because it doesn't use the same format as the other moons. Um, and quite annoyingly, the radiuses of these other moons are also not inside of uh, are not inside of uh, Spice. Um, annoying, um, but I think that that that's not going to kill us too badly. Um, so I think we have enough here to create a file, use it, and rerun the occultations program on everything uh, that, you know, with these new radii. So let's, let's try to do that now. Okay. Um, okay. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, the comma is going to really F us up, but let's not worry about that. Um, okay. Trying to figure this out now. Okay, so we can actually, unless, okay to do, don't do this. So, <laughs> so we won't, won't do this. Skip, um, 
lines without radii. So if we don't have radii assigned for right now, we need to ignore that. Uh, but we need to we need to actually look at those lines because those lines could be important. Those lines will give us our missing data. Okay, so now we should have a much smaller list. That just looks weird without the um, without the actual data being printed. There we go, gorgeous. Okay, so uh, we need to tweak. Let's see. So I think. The only tweak we really need is to get rid of the tilde. Um, and the line we're going to create is, um, and let's see. I mean, we're going to do the same thing they're doing in the pick file, basically. Oh, wow. I actually created one tiny little file. I was going to do this earlier, so I created this l one tiny little file and gave up after literally uh, one body. So it is, but this does give us the format, which is body, uh, dollar sign, I. Now, in order to get this to work correctly, you actually have to, because I, and then we need uh, this, radii equals parentheses, and since all of these have only one radi, um, it's just going to be rads, 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 which just is a weird thing to say. So this isn't quite ready to go, but it's very close. Um, no debugging. And the, let's see, so this is, um, this adds a bunch of new radi uh, to uh, you know, just if we include the file to, to spice. So the only thing we're really missing here is get rid of the tilde, tilde. Um, clean up rad eye. The only thing I'm worried about slightly is that these numbers, some of them are floating points, some of them are integers, but that should not matter. So I think it's that way in the original list as well. So rads equals tilde, get rid of the tilde globally. Um, and now, of course, we need to put a begin data in front of all this. Uh, but I mean, that's this is like 99% of the way there. And so we can do that. Um, And so this file is technically ready to go. Um, the only thing it doesn't have is comments telling how we got how we got to this. And um, it, we don't need them. I mean, this should work fine. Um, so I am tempted to now put this into bcmoonshack.tpc. And then in the max kernel, um, um, I'll put it at the very end so it's sort of clear that this is a, a hack. Um, BC Moon Hacks TPC. And then, um, let me double check. I'm getting nervous now. Um, it actually does, uh, yeah, it does signify an approximate value, uh, and I am basically treating it as an exact value. Um, honestly, I could have done all of this by just assuming all the moons that don't have radiuses are small. That's what we're trying to say. They're, they're, they're small, but they're not zero-sized, which means they can occult a star. Okay, so now I need to run... I don't even need to recompile because uh, BC moon, BC planet, moon 
Cult Star. Uh, viewer is Earth. All right, Pomodoro, back in two and two. And we are almost back. Uh, and we're back. Okay, so observer is going to be Earth. The occultural one, let's make it a moon that we didn't have previously. And uh, this is likely going to crash with an error. Okay. That's kind of interesting. Oh, shit. Shit, shit, shit. Uh, hang on. Um, what's weird here is that, that I try to complain that this one was the wrong value. Okay. So clearly I've done something wrong here. Um, okay. Um... Oh. This is the wrong program. Can I, did I actually end up using BC occultations for this? Uh, bec you know, I think I did because I, I can, this, I was trying to get away with not looking at all the moons uh, and just, you know, only looking at the moons when necessary, but I think I ended up actually using um, this program. Um, I just look through each of the moons individually, which is much more painful, but it does prevent me from having to try to be smart. Uh, okay. Observer. Light source. Shadower. If this doesn't crash, I'll be impressed. Okay. The variable body 555 radii was not, could not, that's the exact thing that I just hopefully created. the hell? And maybe I didn't just create it. Moon's hack. Or maybe I created it and I it chose one that it, even that one doesn't have. No. Okay. So the only remaining problem is I probably am not using the max kernel here. I'm probably loading in something lesser than the max kernel. Yep, I am. Okay. So here we need to do max kernel. We need to recompile now. And I always pipe it to less to make sure there's no errors. Okay. I'm impressed that it hasn't crashed yet. I'm now less impressed because it seems like it's not going to work. Although I do remember this program being really, really slow. Um, okay. So that tells us there are no... Okay, hang on. This is still wrong, though. Um, 
Yeah, this is... Sorry, this is still wrong. We need to find the one that has HYG data in it. Because this is planet to planet. We want... Moon Occult Star. I'll, I'll find this eventually. Viewer... 399... Five, this is it. This is going to go through all the stars. Okay. Moon Occult Star, as viewed from Earth, occulted by... Right, and this actually prints out... This doesn't print out just occultations. It prints out the minimum separation from each star. Um, every time... Uh, 555, which is the moon of Saturn, goes around. So let's see if... And uh, we can always do sort minus K5N. I don't think this is going to get close to anything. I mean... Why is it taking so long? Okay. Now, obviously, whenever Saturn is close to a star... Uh, 555, five, five, which I don't even know what it is. Oh, wow. Um, interesting. Um, I guess if we have a name, we can also update it so that Spice knows the name of it. This is taking much longer than I thought. Obviously, when, when uh, Saturn's close to something, its moons will be as well. Uh, but this shows us that there is no occultation by 555. Five. Uh, in the next year, at least. Let's try it. And then one more, and then I'm going to give up, because obviously this needs to be run in a batch. And these numbers will be very similar to the previous numbers, because obviously the moons of Saturn are fairly close to each other. Okay, so no, no occultations there either. Um, okay, I think I've been going now for a decent amount of time. Two, over two hours. Awesome. Okay, so Rolf, unless you have any questions and you bring them up in the next few seconds, I think I'm going to call it a stream for now, and I may or may not be back later. Uh, if you did watch the whole stream, Rolf, I am very impressed. Uh, you probably deserve a medal or something like that, uh, whatever the uh, Scandinavian equivalent of a medal is. So thank you for watching. Okay, thank you very much for watching, and I may or may not be back later.